Hi, I'm Joanna Capps, a program specialist with National Endowment for the Humanities. Since the 1970s, NEH has supported and collaborated with National History Day, including in the development of free resources found on EdCitement, our educational website for K-12 humanities teaching. Under the American Rescue Plan, NEH awarded more than $87 million in relief funds to cultural and educational institutions all around the country. And so for this year's Ask an NEH Expert video series, we've invited history professionals from a few of those institutions to talk about some of the skills that they use every day, the same skills that you'll need for a successful National History Day project. So the Burke does a beautiful job of supporting the cultures of the Pacific Northwest. I would say mainly a lot of the cultures of the indigenous populations that are germane to the Northwest, but additionally, we have collections from around the world. Specifically for today, I'm gonna to talk about the cultures of the Pacific Northwest. So we're talking about the Coast Salish native tribes and native peoples around here, especially the Columbia Plateau, as is featured in our cultures of the Pacific Northwest virtual field trip. And way that we support the native cultures is by fighting against epistemicide. And epistemicide is basically the murdering of knowledge systems that are indigenous to peoples of the areas or of any geographic area. Specifically with the folks up here, there's a number of different ways the education department consults different tribes and native knowledge bearers to be able to make sure that what we're sending to K through 12 schools, what we're sending to school districts, to anybody who engages with our programs is not only accurate, but authentic and brings out a different side of learning. One that highlights the way traditional ecological knowledge in the area seems to buoy to the top as ways of, of engaging with our environment, as engaging with the different ways and pedagogy around um, our collections and our different programs, including the culture of the Pacific Northwest. So our, our center is really fantastic. Um, it's actually five museums uh, and one research library. It's this uh, fairly large institution in a really tiny town just outside of Yellowstone National Park, for those of you who might not know. Um, we have a fairly uh, wide ranging region and lots of diverse uh, peoples and histories that we like to tell the stories of. In, in our area. And for us, at least for my position as a Native Education Outreach Specialist, working with Native content and disseminating that to public schools, um, my focus of obviously is the Plains City Museum. And our museum has a longstanding relationship with all the tribal communities in the area, um, such as the Eastern Shoshone and Northern Arapaho, the Wind River Reservation, and the Crow and Northern Cheyenne Nations of Montana. They're, our most immediate neighbors too. Um, the histories and the contemporary issues of these tribal communities in this region really are our local history. And we've taken a lot of effort to amplify the voices of native communities. It's not for me to say what a native community needs. We're providing the space for them to tell their own stories. Our approach to local history is national. Um, the New York Public Library has a really incredible collection of historical materials that can help you tell a very local story almost anywhere you are in the United States of America, including maps, photographs, census records, and even things that you wouldn't think of, but that give you a kind of texture of local life. Uh, for example, restaurant menus. Uh, we have an incredible collection of restaurant menus. Certainly, anyone who's trying to get started doing this kind of work, um, you know, needs to start by talking to a librarian at, at the New York Public Library to help you figure out where to begin and what are the strengths of our collections and how they can help you tell a local story where you are. The most important thing you could do um, is look at your native communities that are nearest you and make sure that if you wanna tell their story in some way that you you speak to them, take the time to reach out. It's, it's not always easy. It's not necessarily tapping out a tweet um, or any of those kinds of things. It might mean going to the native community itself. 
but it's important. You want to make sure that um, you are being a good steward of their histories, their stories, and you're you're giving voice to them, and that means um, going to them. And it also means listening. Sometimes we've got preconceived no notions, um, implicit bias that we don't even know we have. Um, sitting back, uh, setting our own uh, preconceived notions aside, and listening. Being the learner in that case is really important. I love this question for two reasons. One, it gives me a chance just to express the beauty of the bird. There's so much knowledge across the three floors that we have here that I continue to learn every day. So that would be something that I would suggest to you all. When you're going through collections, when you're going through different spaces of learning, especially informal learning spaces like the Burke, make sure that you pick up something new, not just something that you know. Go to places to where you can find something that will spark a new interest. For example, looking at tools from Somaliland that we have in archaeology, or looking at the, the sperm whale skull that we have downstairs and talking about the dimensions of how big the whale would be, when it lived, the type of food it eats, how it fits into the ecosystem. Or if we're talking about our, our paleontology floor and looking at the Tufts Love T-Rex, there's a number of different ways that you can engage. And I would encourage you all to engage in something new that ignites a different passion that can continue to help you find your purpose. Secondly, I love this question because it lets me think outside the box, right? And normally we think in linear process, we think, okay, it has to be A to B to C to D, but here you can literally go from A to Z, back to C to F and G and, and do that in any process that you like. You can learn a little bit about biology and you can go learn a lot of bit about the ecology of native lands from 1500 years ago. And again, the beauty of that is you're able to, to bring together, as Paulo Freire says, reading the word, not, not just reading the word, but reading the world as well. And the location of where you are as a learner in all of that, you can help unfold the different means of which we have in different informal learning institutions like the Burke. 